Hey everybody, John Fenn here, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I.org. We are a house church network. We celebrate the gathering of the saints in homes, rotating homes, rotating who leads for those who are able, able and wanting to do so. And in that way, when you outgrow a home, because a good core group of people have been used to rotating and leading, they just multiply out like that and begin rotating and leading among themselves. Find out more at cwowi.org. There's ten, there are 10 videos there, uh, question and answer videos about house church. More than that, sign up for my weekly thoughts as well, which is a weekly teaching that comes out by email on Fridays, US time. And it's there in the headers that we put information about our Zoom online meetings, our conferences, and, and such. So I hope that you'll go there, cwowi.org. Okay, talking today, part two, about establishing boundaries and borders. Now, last time I shared about how Paul talked about how he wanted to stay within his assignment, his sphere of influence, his, his field that God had given him. And I talked about how boundaries and borders establish the, the area where you will not cross and the means by which others may have a relationship with you. That Christians need to grow a backbone a lot of times and just state, these are my morals, these are my ethics, I'm not going to cross that line. And so today talking about misunderstandings and what can happen as a result of establishing your boundaries and your borders. In Joshua 22, we have the situation where Israel has been wandering through the desert, uh, Moses has died, all the people who came out of Egypt have died in the wilderness, and it is their children under the leadership of Joshua and also Caleb, the only two from the previous generation to be allowed to go into the promised land. It is their generation, the kids who were born in the wilderness, who are now young adults following the aged Joshua into the promised land. And when they get into the promised land, they, they spread out and they each tribe takes uh, a section of land for themselves. And there's the Jordan River, which runs north and south along there. And 10 of the tribes were on one side of the Jordan River. And then you had the tribes of Reuben, Manasseh, Gad, uh, who were on the other side of the river. And there was concern on the, t on the two smaller tribes and the half tribes. There was concern that the Jordan River might serve as a, as a natural boundary, a border in which the 10 would say, you guys aren't part of us because you're on the other side of the river. You're on the wrong side of the river. So you can't participate in any of the national things. So there was concern on the part of the two tribes uh, on that side of the river that they wouldn't be able to participate and wouldn't become part of the nation. So they built a big altar of stones uh, as a witness, and, and the Hebrew word is ed, E-D, and it means witness. And they built a replica of some of the altars that were built in the wilderness when they were growing up that their parents had built to the Lord. And that served, they, they thought among themselves, that will serve as a witness to our children and to our children's children about what we went through in the wilderness, about how we are part of the nation of Israel, about all the price that was paid for them. And so along the border, we're establishing this memorial altar. So what's that that's likened to you and I in our day? We, we establish boundaries and we set up things that we say we will not cross. We're not going to let our kids see that. That's an adult movie. Uh, we don't want them exposed to that. That's a movie about the occult. We don't want them exposed to that. It may be during holiday time, you're, you're you know, setting limits and you're saying, hey, you know, I, I'm married to my spouse and I've got to honor their family as well. So sorry, my family, you just have to understand I've got to establish some boundaries here. It can come in our, in our situation uh, in life, not in our personal situation, our situations in life where you're raising kids, you know, and other people have their strong opinions about how you raise your kids or maybe about your marriage and how you treat one another. And they will form strong opinions about it and they'll judge you based on that. And, and I remember one preacher years and years ago talked about how, how a man came up to him and or came up to his wife and, and said, you need to change your hair or you need to do this or that. It was about her hairstyle. And this, this minister this came alongside his wife and said, look, I'm married to my wife. She dresses for me. She wears her hair for me. We dress and, and care for ourselves according to each other because we're married. It's none of your business what my wife's hairstyle is or what my wife's clothing styles are. And, and he, he stepped forward and he established a boundary. Well, when you do that, you can you can rub some people the wrong way. You can you can uh, it can stir up controversy and misunderstanding. 
So in Joshua 22, where you've got the 10 tribes of Israel on one side of the Jordan River and the two and a half tribes on the other side of the Jordan River, and they set up this altar of stones as a witness, the 10 misunderstand their motives. And they say, oh no, our brethren have, have fallen away from the Lord. They, they, are, they are making an altar to the gods and the goddesses that were in this land before. And they totally misunderstand. And in Joshua 22, if you read it, it says they were ready to go to war with their brothers to bring them back into line. And that's very much like what happens today. When you establish a boundary, oftentimes the people are angry with you and they're ready to go to war with you. So the solution, what's, what's interesting is the reaction is they, they wisely send emissaries to the two tribes and say, look, what are you doing here? We're ready to go to war if you guys don't repent. But the but what comes out is this, the 10 tribes were not concerned truly for their spirit, for these other two tribes' spirituality. They were concerned on how it reflected on them. They actually said, they said, look, do you remember all the times where people made mistakes in the wilderness and and they 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 transgressed against the Lord and then the Lord brought his anger down on the whole nation? And he, and they said, our concern is that if you've fallen away from the Lord, then his wrath, his anger is going to come on the whole nation, even though we are innocent. We 10 tribes are innocent. We're not part of this. So it's interesting that sometimes when you establish boundaries, uh, the people that are angry with you, they're not angry because of some guiding principle, like, like they say, you know, we're concerned you've fallen away from the Lord. They're actually concerned with how it affects them. They're angry because it affects them and they don't like it. So that's part of establishing the boundaries that you can offend others. It doesn't mean you have sinned. It means you have offended them. You have, and, it, and they don't like the way your boundaries affect them. So wisely, the 10 tribes sent emissaries to the two. And the two explained, no, 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 no. This is not, we've not fallen away from the Lord at all. This is a, a witness here on the river uh, for our children and for our children's children so they can remember how the Lord delivered us out of the wilderness and what our parents went through when they came out of Egypt. And and so once they explained, then they all understood and they said, okay, no problem at all. It's a witness. And they called it Ed. The closing verse of Joshua 22 says they called it Ed or witness. It is a witness stone. And so that's what happens with, with us today. We may establish some things and it, it acts as a witness. It acts as a testimony to where you will go and where you will not go. And and the, the best thing I can tell you in, in situations where they're angry with you and they are, and, and, and you can perceive that they're actually upset with how it affects them. Maybe you're limiting relatives during the holiday season. Maybe you're, you won't uh, let your children go to a birthday party because they're going to play some movie that's on the, uh, the occult or something of that nature, and you've got certain standards. That serves as a witness. That serves as a standard by which people will remember that you're just trying to protect your children, your children's children, and your home. So that's one teaching real quick. The other one real quick that I want to bring out is somewhat related, and it's out of Isaiah chapter 38, verses 1 through 6. Hezekiah has been healed of his, of his sickness, and there are ambassadors from Babylon who come. And Hezekiah unwisely shows them the treasures in the temple there in Jerusalem. He shows them all the, the gold, the silver, the jewels, the different things that people have, have given in offering to the Lord that are stored in the storehouse. Some of it's been converted into money, etc. And he shows these ambassadors from a foreign land the treasury. And in Isaiah chapter 38, verses 1 through 6, eventually four in verses 4, 5, and 6, Isaiah comes to him and says, you've done it foolishly. Because these guys are now going to come to war against against you, and they're going to not in your day, but in your your, your children's day, they're going to to destroy the temple. They're going to take all the treasuries because you've opened up the treasury to them. And and in this discussion of borders, what I'm saying is this: there are times when you establish the borders, and you need to sit down, and you need to talk to people about but your boundaries and everything. But but Hezekiah unwisely opened the treasures. It's like opening up the treasures of your heart, sharing the deepest secrets of your heart. And he was unwise to do that because Babylon turned on them and ended up destroying the temple and taking all the all the gold and silver and everything else for themselves as a as loot. And what happens is sometimes we can open up our hearts too far to somebody. We can open up like, like Hezekiah opening up the treasuries of our temple. You know, the Holy Spirit is in us, so our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you can share your heart 
with people that you don't really know, that you don't trust, or let me say this, you should not trust. Hezekiah foolishly trusted them, but he didn't really know them. He didn't know their motives. And so my, my, my word of caution on this is, as you're establishing your boundaries, and as there are sometimes misunderstandings in where you're drawing the line, when you're explaining, like, like Reuben and, and Manasseh and, and Gad had to explain to the other 10 tribes what their motives were, do so, but you don't help when open up the treasuries of your heart to people that you don't really know well. You won't, you won't share your full spiritual life. You won't share the, the full volume of what you believe and why you believe it. Just share as it relates to the disagreement with you. That's what the tribes did. They just shared and they said, no, look, the boundary is for this purpose. We're just trying to protect our children and our children's children, letting it be a witness to them about what we've gone through in life so that they can remember the Lord. They can remember that they are part of the larger nation of Israel. And so when you, when you talk like that, take responsibility for your part of it. Take responsibility. Own it. You know, if you, if you establish a border, then own it and, and explain why. But don't be like Hezekiah and just open up the treasuries of your heart to where that person will turn and just use that against you. So use wisdom when you're talking to people like this and, uh, and you'll be blessed. You'll be able to establish a boundary and then you'll be able to, to have peace. You know, years ago, I knew a man who was employed with an, uh, an oil company that did business with uh, companies in Eastern Europe, far in Eastern Europe. And those uh, gentlemen from Eastern Europe would come to the U.S. They would see their counterpart. Uh, and as a result of that, they would then want to you know, sign the contract and then go out and celebrate, have a celebratory meal. But they wanted to do so at a strip club. And this man came to me because he was an executive with the oil company. His responsibility was to host his Far East, uh, his Eastern counterparts who always wanted to go to the strip clubs when they came to America. And, and he was a Christian man, married, happy, you know, solid guy. And he said, I don't want to do this. And he did it once or twice. And he felt horrible about it. So, you know, my advice to him was to sit down with someone he trusts in the company, his superior, someone he trusts in the company and share his heart, share his, the basics of what his objections are, how he's a Christian and he has certain standards and he do, doesn't want to go against them. And, and, and he protected his heart. He didn't share details about his marriage or, or anything like that. He just stuck to the subject at hand. And we prayed that he would have favor and understanding. And sure enough, he did. His bosses understood. They found someone else who didn't object to going to the strip clubs, uh, single man, whatever the case was, wasn't a Christian, etc. But the man came back to me relieved that he had been, uh, had, had that assignment had been taken from him and put on somebody else, even though he didn't like the whole idea of it. But, uh, but he did it in such a way that he talked uh, he took responsibility for it. He owned it. He talked in good tones. He wasn't angry at it. He presented himself well. And that he, uh, because of that, did not open up the treasuries of his heart to share everything about his faith and everything about his life and everything about his marriage. But he just stuck to the subject at hand. So he talked calmly about it. He stated it responsibly. He took responsibility for it and he put it there on, on them. And, and the boundaries were established and peace was at hand. So I hope this wisdom has been good for you. I uh, hope it's been uh, food for thought. Uh, go to our website, cwowi.org. Establish your boundaries, but own it. And in doing so, talk peaceably with somebody. Wait until your emotions are cooled down. Talk calmly to somebody. Explain yourself, why you're establishing, how you're protecting your children, your children's children. You're establishing these boundaries for a reason. And, and then with that, don't open up the treasuries of your heart like Isaiah did in Isaiah 38 verses 1 through 6, because they can turn and get angry at you. Just share the subject at hand and let it go at that. You don't have to explain all your theology and open up all your heart to them. So anyway, hope this has been a blessing to you. Uh, new subject next week. All right, bye-bye.